Aviation enthusiasts often advocate for the re-engining of outdated Soviet aircraft with newly developed and promising Russian engines. The PD-14 engine is recommended for use in all environments. We should evaluate whether this feature is genuinely necessary. Let us first address the IL-86 and IL-96. The retirement of the IL-86 is a topic of great regret for many. Heinrich Vasilievich Novozhilov, a famous Soviet aircraft designer, was involved in its phase-out. They installed PS-90 engines, removed the unnecessary lower deck with built-in staircases, which were more useful for military purposes, and acquired the IL-96-300. The aircraft was initially unwieldy as a result of its insufficient engines. However, the aircraft's economics were comparable to those of the Boeing 777-200, and it was an exceptional wide-body long-haul aircraft for the 1990s after the engines were enhanced. In the 1970s, they developed a long-haul aircraft with 350 to 400 seats as specified in the technical assignment. The IL-86 consumed approximately 10 tons of fuel per hour, while the IL-86 consumed approximately 7 tons. Today, this aircraft continues to operate. However, is it required by anyone? There is a scarcity of orders. The primary reason is that there is a lack of confidence in the ability of the Voronezh aircraft plant to produce a substantial volume. Ultimately, no airline desires to acquire a single aircraft every three years. Implementing the PD-14, which boasts a 15% lower specific fuel consumption and a higher bypass ratio than the PS-90, could further reduce fuel costs, reduce emissions, and enhance operational efficiency for the IL-96. Additionally, the sophisticated noise reduction and composite materials would improve passenger comfort and decrease maintenance expenses. Nevertheless, the fundamental market and production challenges would persist. We should now address the Tu-154. One could argue that the Tu-204 was primarily the result of re-engineering. The thrust of three D-30KU engines is equivalent to that of two PS-90 engines. A bigger cabin was also feasible due to the lighter airframe. The weight at takeoff remained about the same. Therefore, what is the rationale for modifying the Tu-154? The Tu-204 has a maximum seating capacity of 210 passengers, while the Tu-154M has a maximum seating capacity of 164. Consequently, the Tu-204 utilizes 3.2 tons of fuel over the same range. Theoretically, the PD-14's modern design and increased efficiency would enhance fuel efficiency and reduce pollution by equipping the Tu-154 with PD-14 engines. Nevertheless, the Tu-204 has already surpassed the Tu-154 in every critical metric, and retrofitting the older airframe would be both technically challenging and expensive. Now let us look at the Tu-134 and Tu-334. It is impossible to assert that the Tu-334 was the outcome of any work on the Tu-134. The Tu-334 is a stubby Tu-204 with only two units produced at the Kiev aircraft plant and its Ukrainian engines were assembled abroad. The Russian content may have been even less prevalent than it was in the first superjets. The PD-14 is excessively large and potent for the Tu-134 class, and the Tu-334's limited production run provides inadequate motivation for re-engineering. Modern aircraft like the IL-96 and Tu-214 have already superseded the IL-62, necessitating no re-engineering with new engines. Although the PD-14 can potentially enhance fuel efficiency and emissions, the IL-62's antiquated airframe and systems render it an impractical candidate for such an upgrade. The situation is comparable in the regional aircraft category. The Yak-40 is an aircraft that was once considered unique, however, it is no longer economically viable under current conditions. The L-410s in Russia can do it, but it's not cost-effective anymore. Despite being half the size, they require half the crew, use four times less fuel, and are incomparably less expensive to purchase and maintain. The Soviet aircraft was intended for regional missions to inadequately equipped airfields. Yakovlev himself stated that the Yak-40's touchdown run was no more than 400 meters. It was capable of landing effortlessly in Kavalarovo, a mountainous region, where the An-24 was unable to. Its three engines ensured a safe launch on two occasions and level flight on one, and it boasted an exceptional wing. However, in the present day, those duties are no longer required. 
the TVRS44 Ladoga is also presently under development. It will be capable of operating at half the fuel consumption from 800 to 1,000 meter runways with a reduced takeoff weight. The power plant is ready, but Yuzige is currently producing the new aircraft. The PD-14 is excessively large for the Yak-40's airframe and mission. Even its smaller sibling, the PD-8, would overpower such a small aircraft. Although the PD-14 and PD-8 are a significant advancement in Russian engine technology and could theoretically be adapted for various aircraft, the truth is that the majority of old Soviet airframes are inherently outdated in terms of aerodynamics, avionics, and materials. Retrofitting them with new engines would be technically difficult, expensive, and unlikely to achieve the same level of performance, efficiency, or reliability as new generation aircraft that are specifically designed for these power plants. The more intelligent approach for Russia's aviation industry is to concentrate on the development of new designs that completely leverage the capabilities of the PD-14 and PD-8 families, rather than attempting to modernize historical artifacts. Now, do you think Russia should re-engine old Soviet planes? Let us know in the comments. Feel free to like, subscribe, and share our videos. Also, we invite you to join our membership.